Last time on Wanderlust. It's at this point that the eco herb of Smoky Banks kind of holds a, like, what I would think of as, like, a midnight memorial service. So there were deaths that happened because of this. Loss was felt pretty palpably by the town. It's uncommon that there is this much destruction. I appreciate all of you coming out. I'm sure it's a little odd being here with being kind of new to town. It, it, this would usually be the time I would begrudgingly be seeking out the help of Mal, and she is not here. So here's what I'm kind of thinking. Do you have something for us? Find out what caused this, because it wasn't a storm off the ocean, and it wasn't normal weather patterns. Something caused this storm... And I've got no one else to ask, so find out for me and put a permanent stop to it. And then you just see, like, a door open and Willow, like, sticks her head out. And she just goes, well, hello there. Come on back. And then she, like, kind of, like, pats her and goes, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. Everyone's going to love it. So you decided to go for literally the opposite. You went from a desert oasis to a place where it rains every day and most nights. Yep, and the ocean is new and different, and I realize now that I should learn to swim sometime. All right, so I want everyone in the eco herb listening to not worry too much. After this, we're getting autumn swimming lessons, all right? I'll be the first to volunteer to help. I've been swimming my whole life. What do you think people need to take away from all of this information that you just gave them? Just because things are difficult or we don't always get along with community doesn't mean it's not worth trying to save that community. And she, like, gets in her bag and rummages around and pulls out, like, a big, you know, felt-tip pen and pops the cap off, and she grabs your hand and holds it and writes a time, like, you know, probably, like, sometime in the evening, meet on the beach this date. She's like, you are getting swim lessons from me at this time. Don't be late. So Autumn blushes and turns an even deeper red and then, like, hurriedly walks out. We are in a secret society that is not supposed to tell the whole town that there are monsters because I don't want the whole town to leave. I didn't tell them about the secret society. That's a win, right? Trying to get them to not know about the wilds isn't going to make them fear it less. It's going to make them fear it more when they don't, when anything could be out there. I am offering them a glimpse into what's out there and keeping them in town. I guess that's, I guess, cool, and just kind of, like, wanders off, like, mumbling to himself, because now this is what he has to deal with. Autumn watches him go away, and then she just goes, I got a date! Estelle, it's very awkward for you right now. You're living on a couch, which you haven't had to do in a long time, and you just haven't seen Matthew that much recently. You kind of keep trying to, like, find him and catch him. Usually he's just always there, and suddenly when he's not just in your living room all the time, like, catching something on fire and cooking you weird food, it's, like, odd how much effort it takes just to to be on the same page, right? He doesn't work the same shift as you. He is seemingly constantly surrounded by a gaggle of people that you don't know that he's talking to. But you remember that you had something that you wanted to, you know, give him. So just make the really solid mom move of going like, you know what? I'm just going to find him. So you start heading down towards the Warrens. Um, The Warrens, in some ways, saw the worst of the destruction from the storm. They were almost entirely flooded. But the flip side of that is they were kind of a gnarly pirate ship to begin with, and the whole structure used to be underwater because it was part of, like, a storm sewer. So, on the one hand, you can tell that basically everything in here was at one point underwater and now no longer is, so it's a little bit weird. Uh, But on the other hand, what was down here wasn't that great to begin with, so it's no great loss, and it's a bunch of kids anyway, so who cares? 
Well, um, and there were probably like a couple days where kids were like going back to parents or s- like sleeping in the lofts on the floor, like while things dried out. Yeah, and-, and there was a lot of effort made down here because it was like a pretty big living space that needed a lot of attention pretty quick. Mm-hmm. Um, but you uh, make your way down into the Warrens and it is the chaos it always is. There is a decidedly palpable smell that has gotten more interesting as time has gone on. Um, (laughs) The, you know, it's just like a lot of young people running around. There's just constant shouting. It's like you're getting knocked over by skateboards as you're uh, making your way through this storm sewer. You can hear like loud music and arguments. You probably like pass like a few fights, but not like bad fights, just like stupid teenager push fights, you know, as you go down. You kind of generally know the area that Matthew has been living in. So, like, you make your way to this little shack, and it's like, it looks like what would happen, and I'm going to say this as your husband, imagine if I took apart a small house and carried it piece by piece into a storm sewer and then rebuilt it myself based largely on memory. Okay. Just imagine me doing that. That's what it looks like. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, so, like, you go up and, like, press on a doorbell, and when you take your finger off, the doorbell just falls on the ground. <laughs> oh, I- <laughs> sh- shit. <laughs> I'm you- gonna wait until I'm not you, welcome you here. Not- nothing happens when you press the doorbell. <laughs> okay, then I knock. Uh, so when you knock, it's like you go, like, thump, thump, crunch. <laughs> And you can, like, feel the door kind of, like, give a little bit. And then you just hear someone go, Just a minute! And you hear, like, thump, thump, thump of someone, like, going down steps. Then thump, of someone going down the rest of the steps suddenly. And then someone pulls open the door. And you see, like, a guy who, like, looks a little dazed. He's wearing, like, an ill-fitting t-shirt and boxer shorts. And just goes, Ha! Huh, yeah! What's, uh, what's going on? Hey, uh, sorry, I'm looking for Matthew. Ma- Maddie! Maddie! There's a, uh, an old lady. There's a nice, like, <laughs> how should I announce you? T- uh, tell him his mom's here. Maddie, your mom's here! Maddie! <laughs> you, uh, he just kind of, like, wanders away, and you're just, like, the door's open to, like, this living space. It's really dark. It's all wood, like bare wood. There's no carpet anywhere. It's just like board floors. And it's pretty dark because there's no natural light down here, or at least not very much. So there's probably like some reflected down through mirrors, but there is just like bare light bulbs hanging every so often. And as this kid just like wanders off, you uh, like look back into the house and you can see that there's like this mess of a house and then a pristine kitchen. And, uh, you just see, uh, (laughs) you see Matthew, like, lean a head back, and then you see, like, a girl's head lean back out of the kitchen, too. And she just goes, is that your mom? And, like, she just runs around and gives you a giant hug. Oh, uh, hi. Hi. My name is Alexis, but... You yeah, just call me Alexis. It's fine. Anyways, hi. I'm one of Maddie's friends, and you're his mom. And he's isn't he great? We just love having him here. The food is so good now, and the kitchen's clean. Oh, it's so good to me. I've been bugging him. I've been telling him we need to meet you, and it just hasn't happened yet. Anyways, hi. It's so great to finally meet you. Hi, Alexis. It's nice to meet you too. Um, do you mind if I steal Maddie for a second? <laughs> um. He like sticks his head back out and just goes, just come in, mom. Just come in. The, I know, I know how it looks. Just come in. It's fine. The house isn't going to fall down. All right. And look, if anything goes wrong, you've got Goffy to protect you. You can come into the house. It's all right. Yeah. She'll, she'll go in and go back to the kitchen. Um, as soon as you walk in, it's weird because on the one hand, it's like this place is like an alien disaster. But then on the other hand, as soon as you walk in, it smells just like home because it smells like Matthew's cooking. Yeah. You walk back into the kitchen, and he's cooking, like, a meal that he's made for the two of you a thousand times, and he just goes, it's great to see you, Mom. It's been a minute. Nice to... Would you like to join us for lunch? I'm just making lunch for everybody. Uh, 
If I'm invited, yeah, sure. Of course um, you're invited. Why wouldn't you be invited? I, you know, I, uh, um, a little bit older than all of you. Yeah, and look, if I'm being honest, here. like, the rest of the people that live here, they don't exactly, like, they're not very well behaved, if we're being honest, but, you know, and, like, Alexis slaps him on the shoulder and just, like, goes and sits on a couch someplace. But, what's going on, Mum? Nice to see you. What's going on? Yeah, uh, so, um, and she kind of, like, makes sure they're, like, on the side of the wall where she can talk a little bit lower. So, uh, do you remember how I told you I'd bring you something back? Did you bring me back a dead animal? No. Did you bring me back meat? <laughs> no, I didn't Mom, bring you meat. did you bring me back meat? No, but I did- Stop. Just wait. Uh, so first she takes out, like, a small container of, like, the mushrooms. Uh, the white mushrooms. <laughs> he looks at me and goes, Mom! <laughs> We can't. She like this is like stuffing them under a really just just out here in the open just mushrooms just out in the open. What do you, what do you mean? Oh, these are food. These are food. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> these are food. Yes, they're food. I've never seen other kinds of. I've never seen anything other than. Or uh, I don't food. I don't, Got uh, it. These are food. I don't need to hear about that. Uh, and then she takes out the um nutritional canister and like. Actually, no, I'm sorry. She didn't take it out. She opens the bag that she brought to show him because the other thing is all of those little flavor thimbles. Um, oh. So she opens the bag and shows him and she says, all right, so I found this really weird place out there. I cannot guarantee I will ever find something like this again. This, and she holds up the nutritional canister, this seems to be the food part and all of these seem to be the flavors. Now, knowing you and your expertise, you might be able to recreate some of this as you try it. But these are all for you. So you you found random food bits in the wild and brought them back to me and they're like, somehow this turns into like real good tasting food. And we That's, might never get these again. You might never get these again. That's all I know. I figured you would be able to do something with it because you're talented like that. Hang on one second. One second. And he just like slides open a door in the kitchen and just goes, lunch is ready. It's on the table. And he just like throws a bowl on a table, slams a door shut, like closes a window, closes a curtain, locks everything and just like starts setting out plates. And he goes, oh, yeah, we're going to eat all this. And just, like, starts, like, dicing up all of the bits and, like, experimenting with all the things. And you spend, like, like, there's, like, people knocking on the door and he's just like, leave me alone! And is just, like, making tiny little foods for the both of you out of all of these random little ingredients that he has. Perfect. All right. Now... The next part of this is going to be a little awkward, right? Because I kind of have to explain how the economy works to all of you real quick. And I think this is mostly going to be relevant for Fred, and then we'll get to a few other things. And I want to do this on recording because it's relevant for the system and whatnot. So a brief overview of the way that I imagine money working here. So like I, I kind of, we said during world building, there is money that is exchanged for like non-necessity level goods, right? So if you guys do extra crafts, you can earn money for doing that. And then you can exchange those for other goods, right? The way that that basically means is this is how you guys will get other items that you can bring with you into the wilds and use, right? So you have like four levels of things that you can make or buy, which is trinkets, tools, vehicles and structures, right? So a trinket is basically something, you know, the this, this size of a pocket knife, right? Like that would be a trinket. It's the size of something you could fit in your pocket. Generally, there might not be a ton of mechanical value for something like a trinket. If you can justify a way that you're using something of it, because it's like a silhouette size, right? If you can justify how you're using a trinket for something in the wilds, I'm not going to fight you on it. And I, I like the idea of calling them stamps because money is entirely abstract so it's just stamped out of whatever thing that they can make to like make a smoky bank coin you know so it's all like just physical coins and those are just stamped out of whatever material they can be stamped out of 
So there isn't as much like control on like counterfeiting and stuff like that. It's just not the main focus of money. Um, because don't, don't give Fred ideas. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess if Fred really wanted to, he could definitely make counterfeit stamps. The thing is, like, your stamps are only as good as your word, basically. So, like, if the whole town doesn't trust you, they they just won't take your stamps anymore because you won't starve, you won't be homeless anymore. It's not like it'll ruin your life. It's just you won't be able to buy random trinkets from other people. So. Trinkets generally cost one stamp, right? Or one credit, whatever. Tools cost three. Tools are basically like something the size of an axe or a sword. So like, Fred, a lot of the stuff that you're talking about making for everybody would be like a tool-sized item that you're trying to to craft, basically. Okay. Then there's vehicles. Those cost 20 credits. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. That's like a large machine that is mobile, right? Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. There's actually five levels. Then there's machines. Machines would be something that's like the equivalent of a chainsaw. So like if this is pretty big, not necessarily a vehicle size, but like the size of a washing machine or smaller and that it like does some work for you, that um, is a machine. Those cost 10 credits. And mechanically, those can basically give you a permanent aspect or be a stunt. Like they can add a stunt to your character sheet by having a machine. Tools do that thing we talked about where if you use a tool, you add shift if you're successful. So, like, if you use a tool, it doesn't make your roll better. It adds shift on top of a successful roll. Um, a machine adds an aspect. A vehicle basically would get its own car, would get its own, like, character sheet, right? If you guys spent the money to make a vehicle, you're getting, like, the honor in this game. That's going to have its own character sheet, its own aspects, its own skills, and you guys will use that like a ship. And then structures are, if you guys decide you want to build a clubhouse that costs a ton of credits, I don't know that you're ever going to get it to get to that point, but that's kind of how it works. Now, crafting these things, and Fred, this is going to be what's relevant to you, trinkets are free to make, so you can make as as many trinkets as you can try to make, and it'll be down to a skill roll, basically how many successful trinkets you make. Tools require either one credit of investment of materials or, you know, one stamp of investment of materials, or you have to have the raw materials yourself. So, like, for a lot of the tools you want to make, you have that metal that you found in the wild that essentially you can turn into other tools. Does that make sense? And that's down to a roll to see how well you make a tool, right? So if you roll terribly, you won't get it. It'll, it'll just waste the material or waste the credit. If you roll really well, you get a, you get a good tool. If you want to make a machine and then sell it, it costs five credits. You make 10 and it takes a successful roll. Vehicles to make would cost 10 credits. You have to make rolls to make it and it takes a a time. Like you don't just get it immediately. And then structures cost 60 credits and it requires a lot of rolls and it requires help from other people. Now, the other thing I will say where this is relevant for crafting for Estelle and Autumn, you guys had mentioned getting like solar boards. If you want to make your own. 10 credits, plus you have to make a roll or have someone else make a roll for you to do that, or it costs 20 credits to get a solar board from nothing. So, the way now that you guys earn money is kind of different for each... What's up, uh, Zach? So, something like a flashlight, would that be a trinket or a tool? Mm-hmm. I'm, a- I'm asking because it like is more of a tool and function, but in size, it's a trinket. I think I would probably consider that to be a trinket, just because it's like... It's so small and relatively inexpensive to make, I would think. Mm-hmm. I was just curious. And then, so, like, a, a book would also be, like, something like a trinket then, right? Yes. Yes. Because it doesn't have any of the function of a tool. Right. Yeah, like, in this case, basically what it is, mechanically what I'm telling you is you have to spend three stamps to get something that gives you shift on a roll. Or you have to spend five to get something that gives you, or ten rather, to get something that gives you a new aspect. Does that kind of make sense? Okay, no, yeah, no, that, that, that's completely fine. I'm just trying to make sure I understand before I'm like... So I have another question. How does Autumn envision earning stamps, or does she? I think she does a lot of, like, ma- she does a lot of the manual labor for building the new solarium. I like that idea. Okay. Okay. Cool. 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 I think that is. I think that's useful. Yeah. What, would that would that be a paid thing or is that like just community pitching? Because if it's community pitching, I can find something else. Uh, I think it's basically like both. And will okay. No, that that's fine. Okay. I understand. It probably how it, it probably depends on like the amount you do it. 
Right, right, right. So basically, the way I imagine this breaking down is sort of like two things. On the one hand, I want to encourage you guys to like interact with, and it seems bad to say like farm the wild, but a little bit like in the way that uh, Juliet did, where she like made sketches, found things, stuff like that. I want to give you guys opportunities to earn credits by going out into the wilds. And then at the same time, I want there to be in-town stuff. What I'm concerned with with that is that that might not work out. Like, some people might earn more credits than other people. I'll do my best to try to balance that out, so that way I'm not overly favoring one of you, where it's like, honestly, I'm guessing if I go by the rules that I made, Fred and Estelle have by far the most opportunity to earn money, because they both actively have skills that they can sell. <laughs> um, whereas it's Juliet is kind of like somewhere in between and then Autumn by far is the least like amount of opportunity to earn money. And I don't want to, I'm not going to intentionally do that. Um, so I'll try to, I'll try to balance it as a GM, but it's also going to be down to rules. So keep that in mind. This is like a work in progress for the economy, but that's generally how this is going to work out. So now in terms of earning money, I think who I'm going to start with how this is going to work is with Estelle. So Estelle, you are like in this interim time before you guys go back out into the wilds again. You've been working at your, um, at your veterinarian office. Yes. It's busier than you would want it to be. Like, unfortunately, like there was a pretty large disaster. So a lot of people have injured pets. And there's also just been like a lot of like backlog of people wanting to bring their pets into a vet who is missing. I was going to say, yeah, it's been a while since Dr. Reese has been out. Right, right. So that looks pretty, pretty busy for you. So there's like a pretty large amount of time here where you're like seeing people pretty frequently, like probably specifically, you know, there's like an instance where like Honey comes in and is like, oh, can you take a look? And she has like a little shaky dog, you know, who's just like big eyes, just nervous, shaking, Um, you know, and you like check him over and it's like... There's nothing wrong with him, but he uh poops and vomits all the time. He's just a mess. He's a gross dog, you know? But that's definitely the type of dog that she would have. So make me, like, a business roll to see how well you do as a vet. And basically the way this works is it's a regular fate roll where you're using just one of your skills, right? Animal handling? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever your, like, main veterinarian skill is. Wow, that is awful. Um, Two. Two. Yeah. I rolled three minuses and a plus. Gotcha. So I will say, like, at a base, doing this job for the amount of time that you do it, you earn, like, let's say two credits, right? Um, and then on top of that, basically, <laughs> you're making such a sad face. So you earn two credits just normally by doing the job. Just like basically every time you come to town, as long as you're like, I do vet, you get two credits. And then I'll say on top of that, like, between helping Honey out with her very shaky dog and just with the larger number of people that you've had come in due to like, you know, it's like a lot of animals with like broken arms and stuff like that, unfortunately. But it's what happens when there's a bunch of disasters. Well, and I kind of imagine that like the garden animals also have to be oh, checked over. Yeah, so that makes sense. the town, at least this time, probably like pitches in a little bit considering like I think Estelle's basically been working overtime. Yep. So then you earn an extra two credits for that roll, basically, on top of that, which brings it to a total of four. Cool. Um, meanwhile, uh, Autumn, you've spent, you know, a lot of time working just, like, lifting bags and, you know, like, pouring concrete and, you know, like, just running materials back and forth. So make me some kind of, like, physical roll for doing stuff. Like athletics? Like athletics. Man, I rolled terrible. Oh my god. I got a plus two. Uh, okay, so same thing as Estelle. Like, you basically earn four, uh, credits by just carrying a, like, carrying a lot of bags. You do a really good job. That adds an extra two credits on top of it. All right. So, Fred, you finally get to open your, uh, open your business, right? It's kind of like the first time you've been in town with enough time to, like, really, be doing your business, right? Because you left pretty quickly before. This is now like the markets are open. You're actually seeing a huge influx of new people because of so many people working to build the new um, solariums. So there's actually like not tourists, but just like workers from other eco herbs that have come in to help you guys out for a while, basically, as like people have, you know, as there's like community to spare. 
So what I want you to do is just tell me what you imagine your shop looking like for like the average person that might come and visit it. So his shop looks like just kind of a general blacksmith shop. He's got his got his forge and anvil and all that stuff set up on like kind of like one side of it, kind of like what like one half of it is all his like uh, equipment for making his stuff, and then the other half, kind of the that's towards the front door, is more like a shop front where he has like examples of things he's made so like you'll see uh, just the occasional tool uh he has like some stockpile of general tools like th- like shovels and hammers and axes and stuff like just generic stuff like that that people might want um but not not a whole lot of like specialty stuff because obviously you don't want to make a don't want to make a specialty thing until someone orders it so you primarily imagine yourself making like pretty like practical tools right um that yeah that i mean that's what he has in the front he's he'll he's open to taking commissions if someone has an idea of something he'll he'll he can make he'll make stuff custom or bespoke or whatever whatever they're looking for okay gotcha okay now we get to play this fun game uh give me a one word description of the type of customer you want to have respectable no i'm just kidding <laughs> the worst you you knew i had to do it you knew i had to do it <laughs> it's one of the few good running jokes we have we have a lot of bad running jokes it's one of the ones that i think is decent <laughs> i think every single one of our running jokes is good and i hate every single i hate every single one that everyone makes it's like this is a good running joke now stop it so you're saying the best was Spagic. I won't. I will. I will end this podcast right now. <laughs> I regret nothing. <laughs> Gosh, I don't know. I think we need to start just having um, maybe a link on World Anvil of description words. All right. I'm like, I'm trying to think how how heavily do I lean into the used car salesman? As heavily as you want, man. Just go gullible. That's That's exactly the word. That's literally the word I was thinking of was gullible. Uh, okay. So you, uh, you are sitting in your shop and you're just kind of like shoring up your inventory and maybe like messing around with that new metal, you know? Yeah, that, that is something I wanted to do is mess around with this metal and figure out what, what stuff it can do, but. Right, right. And so as you're there kind of like tinkering around, you, it's kind of uncommon really yet. Like you're not super well known, but you, uh, hear the front of your shop, like that door open and close and you look out and see a very like, you know, that look when you can tell someone doesn't know why they're there or what they're doing. See a dude with that look on his face. <laughs> okay. Oh, hey there. Welcome to my shop. What can I do for you? Um, so check this out, right? Here's the deal. I'm from, I'm a neighbor, right? My name's Gil. I'm not like an, that kind of name. I'm from one of the other eco herbs. Sorry. Um, I've I like got off the boat two days ago and I've basically just been hammering nails ever since. Sorry. I'm real tired. It's been a lot. Anyways, I never sleep good when I get to a new place. It doesn't matter. So hi, I'm Gil. I also work with hammers, but they're different. Doesn't matter. My point is, all right, I'm on top of the new solariums, hammering some nails into some rafters. I slip, hit my thumb, I scream, fling my hand back, hammer falls down into the warrens, right? Clatter, 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 blump, falls in the water. I go down into the warrens to try to get my hammer back, and somehow, I swear to you, I feel like I left and it's like my wallet's gone and I smell worse now. And I think a kid said he was going to beat me up. It, it got crazy. Point is, need a hammer. And it seems like your shop had the prettiest looking hammers. So here's the deal. I'll pay good money. Just make me something nice. It's all I need. All right. Oh, for sure. I can, I can definitely make you make a nice new hammer. Um, and, and what, what type of hammer we're we looking at? We're we looking at like a, like a fortune hammer. Uh, like, I think you said you were working on the roof. So I guess maybe a roofing hammer. Framing hammer? Like a framing hammer, like a really nice framing hammer. Yes, that's what I need. Now, look, I've always kind of thought, and he, like, draws out, like, it's a little bit embarrassing. It's like he wants, like, sick flames on his hammer, like, etched in, you know? (laughs) And he's like, and also, if you could put, like, gill in, like, you know, like, etch it in, you know? 
I just want it to feel like it's mine, you know, like the hammer that I had, I had for a long time, and I think it got stolen, doesn't matter, I get it, I dropped it, it's my fault, but yeah, so, you can hook me up with that, that would be great, uh, but yeah, uh, see what you can do, alright, you know, if it looks great, it looks great. Oh, for sure there, um. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking I could probably do something with like a, like a Damascus blend to make that like little pattern pop out, uh, some more. And thinking with the, with that and with all the, with all the customization stuff on it, I'm, I'm thinking it'd probably be in the neighborhood of, uh, five credits, five, five stamps. You, you say that and he like slow blinks, make me a, uh, like some kind of like convince or whatever role. Rapport. Rapport works. Yeah. Oh gosh, that was bad. <laughs> so <a> one, <laughs> I rolled really bad. He like looks at you and just goes, "Uh, I'll tell you what. Here's what I'll do." And he puts three stamps down and goes, "I think we know this is what a hammer is actually worth, right?" Now I've got two more. If I come back and that hammer somehow can drive nails better than any ever hammer has. I'll give you one credit more. And if it also looks as good as I described it looking and doesn't look like trash, I'll give you the other one. All right. So make an amazing hammer. You get five, make a normal hammer. You're getting three. Okay. I'm building you guys a new solarium. So that's the deal. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, I think that seems fair. That's fair. That's fair. All right. And he, he like leaves and you see him like go and walk over to another stall and like get a cup of like tea and just like sit on a bench and basically fall asleep. <laughs> so, I've decided something about Fred. When I originally described him on podcast, I I part of the description was he like makes substandard stuff and kind of kind of like takes shortcuts. I don't think I like that angle. I think what I'm going to go with instead is he always tries to overcharge, like he but he haggles for everything. He tries to overcharge like like I just did, and he also tries to upsell whenever he can. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the angle I'm going. I think that's I think that's the angle I'm going to go with. I don't I don't know. I don't like the idea of especially if I'm selling things to people in town. I don't want them to break on them. I don't like that idea. And when there's only so long you can screw people before they just stop coming in. Right. All right. So I guess I start working on his hammer. Yeah, so now this is where to make a hammer. Well, I guess are you using that new metal or are you using um are you using like whatever just other metal? So, I think I had here's the idea. Uh I think I'm going to for the for the majority of the hammer. Well, I guess what are the properties of this metal? I know we have some of the properties, but like is there any more I can learn about the about that metal? So, it is softer than steel, but not as soft as aluminum. Um it well and you haven't tried hardening it yet like heating and quenching it to harden it and it holds heat for a long time and it glows it, uh, wait it holds heat or it holds light cuz i thought i remember i thought last time we talked about it it didn't really it was it glowed but it didn't really it wasn't hot right sorry it was hot it wasn't melting your skin hot Okay. It, but it was definitely, like, while it was glowing, it was warm to the touch, but it was not, like, ow, my, it wasn't, like, melting your skin. You know, it was warm to the touch, not burning off your fingerprints. Okay. So I'm trying to think how I want to do this, since I have a limited supply of that metal. So let me tell you, like, mechanically what I will say for this. If you use the metal, you will lose weight of that metal. Right. But if you you and this is, like, hand wavy and an abstraction... If you use some of the metal, we won't... You could mix it with steel, right? Like, if you wanted to do, like, accents with it, but still have the hammer be largely made out of steel, that's fine. But it means we'll just negate the cost of trying to make a tool, and you'll just... It'll be free to try to make, but you lose some of the metal no matter what. Or if you go, I'm not using any of this metal, it costs one credit to try to make a hammer, so if you completely fail the roll, you just lose the credit and have to try again. But so if you, it, I guess that's another question. Is this... All of the metal, just general metal I have. So I remember at, in the first, like before we went out in the wilds the first time, I brought back a bunch of like scrap, scrap iron and stuff. 
scrap steel. So the abstraction of the way the economy works, if you want to spend the resources necessary to make a tool, it costs a credit. Okay. So we don't have to get specific with it. That is the abstraction. Using that metal that you got from the wild makes it free because like the work is finding random materials in the wild that you want to use, but you have a very limited supply of that, right? Like, I don't know how much you're carried back of it, but that's all you have. Now, the question is, do I have any credits? No, but I'll allow you to go into debt to try to make a hammer. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) You you can get a loan of one credit to see if you can get three. (laughs) Uh, Okay. So here's what what I'm thinking for the the hammer. It'll mostly... Oh, yeah. You have credits. He paid you three credits to make the hammer. Yeah. Well, I thought that was... I didn't get that until after, but... No, he paid you up front. Yeah, and then it's two more. Yeah, so actually, yeah, you have three credits. Okay. So what I'm imagining is it's mostly made out of fairly standard steel. Um, Is You said the mystery metal was pretty soft? Softer, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I... Before I make this hammer, can I try hardening hardening it? Like, I'm I'm willing to sacrifice some of it to try hardening it. Hardening it. Just to see what it does. Make me some kind of craft check, yeah. That is a four. Uh, so you can harden it, and so this is where, like, eh, whatever, minutiae of metal. Like, if you're using tool steel, you're usually not using tool steel on tool steel. Um, so tool steel would break this, but, or even while it was hot, this would be able to form mild steel. It would not be able to form hardened steel. Hardened steel would beat it, but it is... After being hardened, it is harder than mild steel. Okay. So it wouldn't just immediately wear off if it hit a nail. Right. Okay. That's that's good to know. All right. So what I'm thinking I want to do is I want to make the striking surface, like the the, the majority of the hammer, um, like the bulk of it will be uh, will be just regular steel, uh, like tool steel what, or whatever. I don't know the terms. Whatever you normally make hammers out of. Sure. Uh, however, I want to. I don't really know if this how you would even do this in real life, but I want the striking surface and the flame accents. So I imagine this is actually a like metal metal handled hammer sure. instead of a wood handle. The accents and the striking surface are the flames, or, 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 or sorry, is the mystery metal. So striking surface and the flame sure. accent is mystery metal. Uh, okay, so make me a crafting roll. Come on, crafting. That, that is a six. <laughs> okay, cool. So he comes back in, and this is maybe, you know, whatever. Some hours later, he comes back in. He looks a little bit more, like, bright-eyed and just goes, All right, feeling more awake. Let's see this hammer. Hopefully, you know, I gave you three credits. Hopefully that wasn't a mistake. Let's see what you got. All right, so here, so take a look at this. All right, so I, I found this... I found this uh, Interesting metal that I'd never really seen before, and I kind of used it to to form the striking surface and the and the, and the accents here. It's got a really nice, nice, uh, it's nice and hard. It won't won't break under uh, while hitting nails. And now watch this. And he kind of kind of get, gets it. He doesn't put it all the way in the forge. Kind of gets it just into the forge just enough so it starts to glow. And you see the flames glowing, the flame on the accent. Uh, he looks at it and goes, "All right, all right, you know, yeah, it's it's pretty cool." It's pretty, and then he like reaches into his pocket and pulls out a nail and just like puts it on a board that you'd have you know laying around someplace and goes right. Let's, we're just gonna give it a shot. And he like swings and hammers, and when it does, it sparks because of that like slightly softer metal. Just makes like a little burst of sparks, and he goes, "All right, yeah, that's really cool. It's cool. I can't fight with you on this one. It's pretty cool that I have a hammer that shoots sparks and glows. Do you just have to stick it near a fire to get it to glow like that?" Yeah, just get it, just kind of, yeah, a little bit in a fire. Uh, it does get a little warm, but it doesn't, like, burn your hand. Just just be careful with it. It will glow for quite a while after you take it out. Oh, so it, it gets, like, warm and would, like, keep me warm if my hands were getting cold while I was hammering nails? Yeah, I th- yeah, I guess it could do that. And he, he just, like, slides two credits over and goes, I'll be back. <laughs> I think a lot of people are going to want these. This is really cool. And he, like, goes out, like, spitting the hammer, and he's like, boy, you can tell he's, like, feeling <laughs> good about it. He is going to have the coolest hammer on the job site. <laughs> that actually works out well, because because <laughs> uh, Estelle got four credits. Well, someone else got four credits. I just netted four credits. Autumn. Autumn, yeah. Everyone netted four credits so far. Oh, no, you got five. Yeah, but I just spend one. No, you use some of that mystery metal, so that negates the that negates the cost. Again, this is an abstraction. Oh, okay. If you use any, I will say that used up a pound of your mystery metal. Let's just say. Okay. And we'll we'll use that as like our base. 
How much of that do you have in terms of, like, poundage? 12 pounds, I think. Okay, so you used up one of those. All right, so uh, the other three of you make your way into uh, Fred's shop. You know, it's finally gotten up and running, and he, like, told you guys, you know, like, hey, come by once uh, once you get a minute, because, you know, we're going to use some of this metal to make some stuff. So all of you walk into Fred's shop and can kind of make some requests here. So I actually already mentioned to him last episode what I wanted. I actually need to go talk to Maggie about what I need. Oh, okay. Can you just real quick for the sake of it, can you just repeat it one time what you want? Yes. I uh, I mentioned to Fred, Estelle mentioned to Fred that uh, she wanted a flashlight and was wondering if it was possible to do it with the metal that he had as like, uh, you know, a multi-use type of flashlight. Sure. Okay, cool. Uh, what does uh, Juliet want? So Juliet would like, this is going to sound real dumb, and I don't know if it's actually dumb or if it just sounds dumb. You can kind of let me know. <laughs> so I, I think what Juliet wants is like, I don't know if your grandparents have one of those like little grabber tools to grab stuff. <laughs> this feels like the most on-brand Juliet thing to ask for. <laughs> and, and so she wants that so that she's able to like collect things and look at things even if they're far away or hard to reach. And I think she would particularly like the metal on the front if it was the special metal. Like the whole thing does not have to be made out of the special metal. But if the metal on the front glowed that would be useful. You know, like you stick it into a crevice and you can see what's in the crevice instead of sticking your hand into the crevice. A light up articulated grabber. That's pretty cool. Okay, Caitlin, you said you said you thought it sounded dumb. I think that's awesome. <laughs> okay. Yay. <laughs> I like this idea a lot. Yeah, this is fun. This is really fun. Okay. So that's what I'd like. Is that is that doable? I don't know much about engineering, to be honest. Oh yeah, that's uh that's definitely doable. I think I think I can make something with that. Thank you, Fred. I appreciate it. Autumn, what's your thoughts? A spear. <laughs> <laughs> Glowy spear. Autumn's really straightforward about this. I like that. <laughs> so it looks cool at night. The, the thing is, I, I like, I, I like in character, I think Autumn would ask for a walking stick, and I think Fred would also read between the lines and be like, she should have a spear. You know, like, it's all, you know, she's like, I want a walking stick that can, like, 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 help her bounce, and Fred's like, "Cool, you're 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 getting a spear, so like, when the monster comes, you can stab it, and I can run." <laughs> I want a sharpened walking stick. Wink. <laughs> I mean, have you have you used them? The walking sticks are pretty sharp. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, the next kind of uh, phase of this, basically, Fred, you got some rolls to make here. So basically, three rolls, one to make each one of these. And then also, you guys have credits if there's other things you want to buy, because I know that Mandy has something she wants to buy. So, Fred, I'll, also, it will be actually four rolls, because I'm making, Fred is making himself an axe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so go ahead and make those four rolls, just so we can see what's successful, and then we can do any other shopping y'all want to do. So, I'm trying to figure out exactly what this, how this flashlight, is it just going to be a flashlight, or am I making a flashlight into something else? Because if it's just a flashlight, that's a trinket. That's more simple. I'm just trying to make get the most use out of it, you know? Yeah, um, I just envisioned it as, like, a flashlight, but also, I mean, the fact that it would retain heat is, like, that's a pretty, like, it's nice to be able to have, uh, like, um, hand warmers, <laughs> so. Well, yeah, it's kind of like a, like a, like a heating pad. Exactly. Essentially. So, that's up to Cody if he wants to make that more than a trinket, but that's. I think in this case, because it's down to crafting it i'm not as worried about the cost so it doesn't matter because it's free either way so just make a craft roll for it and we'll see how it goes okay and then i also wanted to check or because if you're imagining like a like an actual flashlight that's more of a beam of light that illuminates a specific area this would kind of just glow around is that what you're looking for either okay yeah just like my my at the moment estelle does not have a light source Okay. Okay. Juliet has a crank flashlight, but she doesn't have like a lantern. Like, you know, when you go camping, you have like your Coleman lantern. Yeah. I kind of imagine this would be similar to that and also be able to, like I said, have heat. So anybody gets a cramp, you can snuggle it like a warmie. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Um, okay. I guess I just go do them, do them one at a time. Yep. Go for it. Okay. So going for the, uh, Estelle's flashlight. 
That is a four. Nice. Uh, okay. So basically the way mechanically this works is essentially you have a campfire that you can, like, like if the outside of it's made of a regular material like metal and glass, if you, like, pop it open, it, like, exudes heat and light, and then maybe there's, like, because, like, regular lanterns usually have a thing where they have, like, a shutter on them that you can, like, shutter off the light, then open it, um, and it just has to be recharged near a fire. All right. So, you have a little pop-up campfire, essentially. <laughs> Perfect. Going for uh, Juliet's grabber thingy. Name pending. Also a four. Nice. I'm going to call it the glowy grabby until someone else comes up with a name for it. The glowy grabby? Yeah. Nice. Okay, you say someone until Caitlin comes up with a name. <laughs> glowy grabby is like the walkie-talkie of this world. <laughs> <laughs> the glowy grabby. Glowy grabby. <laughs> yeah, so I think your glowy grabby, it's probably like pretty heavy and big. But not, like, and the reason I say that is, and we'll have to, we'll talk about a weight for next time. Doesn't matter. The reason I say that is that if it's, like, can reach pretty far and maybe has, like, some pretty decent, like, control on it, it's, like, something that could be, like, backpack mounted. Oh, that's neat. That's real neat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll talk about weight for that next time. Okay. And, like, range. You just got yeah. Ellie again. <laughs> that's true. That's true. You have a thing. <laughs> I'm all about the metal appendages. <laughs> all right, ready for the next one? Yep. Going for Autumn's walking stick spear. <laughs> totally not a spear. <laughs> and I imagine I'm also making the tip out of the special metal because we worked together to get it. I'm I'm making all of these things out of, with the special metal. Autumn's cool with that. Oh no, <laughs> that's a two. No, that's a two. Yeah, I rolled real bad. <laughs> so, um, you know, like. Autumn, you made this request for, like, a walking stick. Wink! And then he hands you just, like, a spear. <laughs> it's like, it's a spear, and you're like, it's not a grabby glowy. You know, I mean, like, she got a grabby glowy, and it's like a backpack-mounted robot arm, and you're just like, I have a pointed stick. <laughs> right, it's like, I'm looking forward to, like, having basically the spears they have in um, Black Panther, you know? Yeah, <laughs> It's like, yeah, no, yeah. I just get, I just get a, I'll get a metal pole. <laughs> get a metal stick that glows a little bit, and you're like, I should have been more specific. <laughs> At a certain point, this is on me. <laughs> no, that's fine. Sorry, Zach. I rolled real bad. Tell me about it when I roll for extra money and I get a plus five on the roll and I roll a two <laughs> total. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, I I'm I, I decided to change when I leveled up. I decided to level up my crafting since that's wholeheartedly what my character is. Yeah, that makes instead. sense. So uh yeah, I, I'm rolling at a plus five, and that was a two. <laughs> it was three minuses. Uh, all right, so rolling for Fred's axe. Uh, that is a five. Awesome. So, yeah, this is like that awkward thing where, you know, you hand Juliet a pointed stick, and then... Autumn. Autumn. Gosh, I'm sorry. You hand Autumn a pointed stick, and then you're like, and check out this axe I made, and it's like, bearded axe with like a big spike on the back and it's all like carved and beautiful there's like a mural on the blade and you're like look at this cool thing and she's like got a pointed stick <laughs> it's very much that like captain america winter soldier it's like it's not <laughs> personal it's like it feels a little personal <laughs> <laughs> um all right so while you all are wandering around the market um is there anything else that oh. anyone wants to buy yes Vinny, what's up real quick how much of that of my mystery metal did that cost me to do? Let me get back to you on that uh, before we go into the wilds. Okay. I will have an answer for that. I just want to think it through a little bit more. I, I was, I mean, if you want to say four pounds, a pound for each tool. Um, it'll probably be something like that. I just want to be a little bit more specific about it. Okay. Uh, Estelle is going to go to um, Maggie's shop and she is going to request a harness backpack for Guffy. When you say a harness backpack, do you mean like he has a pouch that he can carry? Yeah, yeah. So it's like a harness and they have yeah. pockets on either side. Like saddlebags? Yeah. Okay. Maggie's the one whose husband has like 3D printers everywhere, right? Yeah. Um, and, and she does like, the outdoor fabric. Right. So you walk into this shop and it's like, on the one hand, it sounds like typewriters running, because it's like of like three D printers printing a bunch of junk, and then it also has like that canvasy smell of like leather and canvas, and you see her like in there like hammering needles through leather into canvas, and she looks up and goes, "Hello, it's so good to see you again. Oh my goodness!" And she like runs up and gives you a hug and just starts petting Guffy. What can I do for you? 
Hey Maggie, um, I was just wondering if uh, I could get a harness made for Guffy with like pockets on the side. She like looks at Guffy and starts like putting her arm around him and is like, so how much of this is fu- none of it. It's just solid dog. Yeah. And so she like gets out a tape measure and starts like measuring around him and is just like, Ooh, extra, extra large. Extra, extra large. All yeah, right. I, I can pay for the extra bit. Uh, you know, just call it three credits and tell your mom to cast me in the next production. And she, like, winks. <laughs> I uh, cannot, I will not promise anything, but I uh, will recommend you. Right, no promises, but, you know, help me out. Maggie, you know I don't do anything on that stage. Of course not, you'd have nothing to do with it. And she winks again. Okay, Maggie. Thank you. Great. Talk to your mom for me. I'm winking. Three credits. It's a big dog. Wink. Estelle leaves the three credits. (laughs) Great. I'll assume the extra fabric is a part in the next lead. Wink. (laughs) So, yeah, like we could say, you know, whatever. Later that day you come back and pick up your harness. She's still winking at you. (laughs) Yeah. All right. Anyone else got anything that they want to purchase? I want a flashlight. Why? Because I should have a flashlight? Okay, we just got two light sources so far. Yeah, until we all need a light source when we get split up and I'm in a cave, drugged out of my mind by mushrooms, with giant moles coming at me. I was gonna say, there is an instance <laughs> where Autumn was alone in a cave. <laughs> that did happen last time. Fair, night. okay. <laughs> um, I will say you have an option here. Um, It depends on mechanically how you want it to work. If you want to spend three credits... I will say you can, like, use this as something that can add shift to a roll, and it's going to be, like, a big, hefty flashlight, like, basically a mag light, like a a club slash thing, you know, or... Why are you giving me these options? Because I didn't want to spend any money. Well, you have to spend one. Because I want to build a hoverboard. You have to spend one for a trinket. I I know. I want want to do as little as possible so I can build a hoverboard. And you're like, but you could have a really cool flashlight. You can can spend one. You can spend one and just get, like, a small... You know, it's just like a... Yeah. I'm going to get the normal flashlight. I just need a light source. Uh, okay, so... Basically, what you find is one of the, like, glass blowers. Basically, what he does is he takes the guts of old flashlights, like, Real quick, you know, that they find... Fu- hmm. I did make the tip of your spear out of the mystery metal. I don't think it's the same, though. I don't think they'll be, like, all day. And it's not, like, something I can click on. Okay. Well, and if it's not near fire for a while, then it will eventually, like, not glow anymore. Right. Okay. Just want to make sure you were you're aware of that. <laughs> well, that, that. That's kind of my problem is, like, I could heat it up at the beginning of the day, but, like, if it's, like, after four hours, it's no longer going to be a light source. So, you know, you have this thing that you can, like... Uh, like, click on and off, but it's, like, this kind of cool glass-blown thing that's, like, made one at a time, you know? All right, so, anyone else got anything that they want to purchase? So, what is the, like, we have a carrying capacity when we go out in the wilds. What is that limited by? I believe it's 60 pounds. 40. 40 pounds. Is that, like, a hard limit, or could we buy a bigger pack to carry more stuff? It's not a pack limit. It's uh, your ability to carry things is 40 pounds because you're a normal human. I mean, I do have a plus five athletics, so do I get to carry 50 pounds? You can carry 42 pounds. I'm, I'll take it. I won't. How about this? I won't charge you for the flashlight. <laughs> the flashlight you can carry for free. All right, I'll take that then. I'll take what I can get. Can, I, we don't have to narratively do this, but can we say that me and Sheriff Mitchell do a book exchange? <laughs> it'll It'll come up. Don't worry. All right, so any other purchases that we want to make? I'm still thinking. Because my thought was if I could if I could get, like, a bigger backpack to carry more stuff, but that's not a thing. The weight limit, yeah, is not weight. It is... It's not bag size. It is your ability to carry weight. And I guess, let me put it this way. If you wanted to increase your carry capacity, um, draft animals or vehicles. In reality, like, a seasoned backpacker carries, like, 50 pounds, not 40 it's not that much more weight, just, like, carrying... 40 pounds would be a lot for a regular person who is not doing this for a living. Yeah, like, I think 90 pounds is, like, what infantry in our military has to carry, and that's a freaking lot. Yeah. <laughs> that's a lot to carry. And I could be wrong, I could be wildly wrong on that number, but 90 pounds is, like, a crazy load, right? So you're not getting that much more either way. Just a quick search. They say uh, 20% of your body weight. 
So if you're 150 pounds, that's 30 pounds. So 40 pounds is reasonable, is a reasonable number. Yeah, I mean, I, I got th- I got that number by, like, looking at backpacking stuff online. Oh, okay. Yeah, that wasn't made up. I guess I'm just used to D&D rules where it's insane. It's like multipliers of your strength multiplier, and it's insane, but that's also fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if what you want to save up for is a vehicle, that's fine, but, you know. Hoverboards! All right, so Vinny, you got to make a decision in, like, the next minute, because otherwise we got to move on. Yeah, I know. Can can I say narratively, like like this is completely narratively, and I'll pay for it when I'm like done. But like Autumn starts like figuring out what parts she needs for like a hoverboard, you know? I'm like, oh yeah, definitely, definitely, yeah. So that like, I presume it's like a more complicated process. Like she buys some of the parts to start like putting it together, but like it's yeah, I'll pay the whole cost. What you know, like, but narratively she like goes and like starts sourcing some of these things out. Like like how do I build a board? Like how do I do this thing? Uh, all right, Vinny. So yes or no. I will go with nothing, not, nothing for now. I'll figure, I'll figure it out for next time. Okay, cool. So, you guys have your day in the market. Um, you all are now carrying some new and interesting tools. And my spear. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and the spear. <laughs> I mean, it's still close. It's still pretty cool. So, a few days later, Estelle, you are, uh, you're working in your office, you know, and like, it's sort of like a little bit of a slow time and, uh, Autumn walks in. Oh, hey, um, did, um, uh, I know you were here helping move some of the new equipment. Um, did that get all put into the new, um, into that office room? Yes, I think. Okay, I'll, I'll take a look at it when I'm done in here. Uh, You should double check to make sure I moved everything the right way, because there were some things you said not to move, and some things you said to move, and then there was a lot of people moving about, and I got a little confused, because I know what none of this stuff does. Uh, believe me, it's been busy, so don't worry about it. I'll take a look at it. Here in a minute, uh, once I get my brain back on. Are, are you doing okay? Like, it seems like things are stressful. Like, I'm lucky, and my skills are lifting heavy things, and that's pretty easy to do and not very stressful. Well, it's just been really busy. Um, thankfully, there hasn't been a lot of, um, Animals that have been very, very hurt, mostly a few broken bones and stuff, but it's just been busy. It's just everyone needs help at this point. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad you're here to help them. Uh, it is good to be back, even if it is busy. Although I guess we got to stop looking at going back out at some point. Right. And so I've been thinking that we, we, we got off on the wrong foot a little bit, I think. I unfairly was projecting some things on you. You want to take a, you want to take a seat and we can hang out for a second? Sure. I can not just awkwardly lean in the doorway. So, I haven't told anyone, but I didn't really tell my family before I left. And like I had my reasons and they're probably not the best, but my parents were a little bit naggy, for lack of a better term, and forceful, and I just felt like I needed to get some space and not be mommed. And then I came on a boat to the middle of nowhere, and I met someone who is a mom immediately, who's a really good mom, but I might have then, like, projected a little bit and not been as kind as I should have been. You do a lot of good work, both, like... In a group, but, and like as a mom, but I might have been projecting a little bit and not wanting to be mommed, even if you weren't always doing that. And I want to say I'm sorry. Well, thank you for saying that. Um, I am very sorry if I came off, I came across as momming you. I certainly did not mean it. Actually, I've been feeling pretty bad because I thought I was being a little bit cold to you. Like, I'm, I'm not used to, I'm, I'm very used to being very independent <laughs> and very on my own. Uh, so in a very good way, you can be very outgoing. I just don't always respond very well to that, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. I am a little bubbly at times and. I, I think about my actions, but from the outside, I can see why people think I just leap into things, and that can be off-putting. You know, I would be lying if I said that um, 
that also uh, didn't worry me. You know, you uh, can be a little reckless. <laughs> and not that that's like inherently a bad thing, but uh, it uh, can make, it does make me a little nervous. So <laughs> I think that's just something I'm going to have to get used to. Well, at least you got me and Matthew to both help you learn that. Mmm, yeah. Now that I think of it, do you want me to help Matthew, like, not get in shape, because that feels like I'm telling everyone, but, like, do some, like, training stuff with him? Like, I was a volunteer firefighter for a bit, so I kind of know... That's right! You did say that you were... Um, you know, I recently had a discussion with Mitchell that he, he might need some... He might need some help with getting these kids ready for stuff like buildings falling down, and that might not be a bad thing to do. Yeah, I can I can definitely talk with him about it, and if even if he doesn't want it, I can talk. To I mean, him. if I had my choice, I wouldn't let Matthew do it. But um, I mean, I I get that, but I don't think you can really stop him. Not as in even if you could stop him, I don't think it would stop him. Not. That you, you, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm messing this up. No, no, I, um, I think it's something that I am just going to have to work on coming to terms with. So, oh boy. So, obviously, no kids. Not a thing I know about. But, I think you're doing great. Well, thank you. I definitely appreciate that. Uh, and Estelle kind of like, she's got like a hand on her, um, desk and is kind of like pushing some of the paperwork around. And then she sits up straight. Oh, I totally forgot. Um, hang on. And she dives into a drawer and pulls out a piece of paper. So you'll have to forgive me. I did stop filling this out. Um, and I am going to need you to double check some spelling things. But uh, I think you might want to take a look at this. And she hands you a form for a new animal discovery that she's planning on submitting with the name uh, Floating Babilius. I know you wanted to name them Bobs, but the thing about this community is like you have to pretend to make it sound scientific so that they'll accept it. So, like, Autumn, like, tears of blue. Thank you, Estelle. Also, Autumn went to college to be an editor, so she could actually edit this stuff. <laughs> I will look at this right away. Before I go, I, I have... Can I ask you something? Go for it. Hypothetically, if I were to be going on a date where I learned to swim with someone, what should I wear? <laughs> you are asking the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> I have... Three friends in town, and someone I'm going on a date with. And then there's another guy who's like 10 years younger than me that's really into me, and I cannot ask him this question. I don't think I've been on a date in. How old's Matthew? 16? 16 years? <laughs> I don't know if Juliet would be able to answer this question or feel any more comfortable. Okay. Maybe the three of us need to get together and pull our answers. I I don't... I've never been swimming. Like... Wait, you've never been swimming? No. Like, I, I grew up in a desert. You know where I li like... Well, I, I knew it was a sim... I didn't remember which symbiote it was, but... It was the oasis. So we had the oasis, but it was, like, different. You know, like... Like, the ocean versus, like, a little pond. You know, like... And, like, honestly, that, that water is, like, is reclaimed water that we use for, like, drinking, so, like, it's not really, like, a p swimming area in the same way. Okay, yeah. I think um, we're definitely going to sit down with Juliet, and we are going to take stock of our options, and th between the three of us, we can figure this out. She is going to be so happy to make us, like, 45 lists. And by us, I mean me. Wait, are you, unless, do you have a date? I do not have a date. Okay, just want to double check. I just need you guys to understand, there is now going to be seven in-town episodes where one of them, I guess, is a bikini shopping episode. 
because I'm just ashamed of myself now. Great. Thank you for that. As a GM, I want to thank you for having to have me now describe what Willow wears while swimming, because I didn't really think about that. Like, I was just going to brush over, you know, how stringy her bikini is, but I guess she wears a chainmail bikini because, you know, <laughs> we're going for the cliches. So thank you. For the, I want to say thank you as the GM for making me now have to deal with that. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this episode of Wanderlust. Music for this show is credited down below. If you like this campaign, you can find more of our shows at the Wandering Gamer website or on Podbean. You can also find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Links in the description. Now bear in mind, in the wilds, some wander to get lost, and some wander to find themselves. (laughs) 